How good is Justin Herbert? I mean, he looked fantastic against the, the defending Super Bowl champions, the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, you throw for 300 yards and one touchdown in your rookie debut against the defending champs? That's enough in my eyes to go ahead and say, hey, you have the green light. You are given the reins. You are you are our starting quarterback because you can only get better from this point forward. And I think a lot of NFL fans think the same way. Justin Herbert should be the starting quarterback even if Tyrod Taylor were to be healthy and were to be capable to, to, to play because of that performance or from that performance that Herbert had. It's enough to convince us. There are those group of people though. There's this group of people every single year. That will say that Justin Herbert, nah, man, he's not ready to play. He needs to develop. He needs to sit and learn. He needs to take notes on the bench. He's just not ready to play. At this point, yeah, you have no choice. But for you guys that are saying that he is not ready to play, maybe true, maybe he isn't. But for you guys to refer to the sitting and learning theory, oof, mm, you're going to get me started on this one. All right, so I've been talking about this theory. <laughs> oh, gosh. For so long on this YouTube channel, the sitting and learning theory for a quarterback is the stupidest theory out there. I mean, it sounds smart. Hey, why don't you just sit and you learn, you take notes, study some film. Yeah, why not? Learn some tips and tricks. But it's statistically proven that if a quarterback starts at least 11 games the rookie season, more likely than not, they go on to have a successful second season. Don't believe me? Here are some examples. Andrew Luck, Russell Wilson, Matt Ryan, Ryan Tannehill, Mitch Trubisky, Blake Bortles, Marcus Mariota, Derek Carr, Jameis Winston, Carson Wentz, Dak Prescott, Andy Dalton. The list goes on and on and on. Most notably, or recently, Josh Allen, Kyler Murray in this trend having successful second seasons because they started the majority of their games through rookie season. You could be saying, well, like Blake Bortles, who, like I said earlier, is arguably, I would say maybe not top 10, probably top 15 greatest quarterback of all time. Guys like Blake Bortles or Mitch Trubisky or uh, Marcus Mariota, those guys aren't really having success nowadays. Well, that's because of how good they are as a quarterback, how talented they are. You're either good or you're not. It doesn't matter When you start in the NFL, you're going to be good. For you guys, I keep on saying that you need to sit and learn. Use the examples of, oh, Patrick Mahomes or uh, Aaron Rodgers, maybe even Lamar Jackson. Listen, those guys were going to be good no matter what. It didn't matter when they started. Patrick Mahomes did not learn much sitting 15 games behind Alex Smith. Okay, Lamar Jackson did not learn much sitting nine games behind Joe Flacco. You're either talented or you're not. Those guys are talented, Aaron Rodgers, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, because of their physical attributes. And their physical attributes, they did not learn from the veteran quarterbacks that were starting ahead of them. The sitting and learning theory was a media-based, developed theory, most notably by Colin Cowherd. Oh my gosh, he just keeps on bringing it up. Colin Cowherd, man, Colin, you got to move on from that. That it, it, it sounds smart, like I said, that, oh, yeah, you can sit on the bench and you can learn. You don't want to hurt their development. We treat these quarterbacks like they're a gentle, incompetent child. Like, oh, no, you got to be gentle with them. They're not ready. Oh, no, 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 don't, don't go in there just yet. No, 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 you're not ready. Like, uh. Listen, that's not true. And the reason why it's not true, let me give you an example. Kind of relate this to real life. Any skill or any job that you have, the only way that you're going to get better at it is if you actually do the job. Say, for instance, I worked at uh, Jimmy John's, okay? I made subs, and I worked at the slowest Jimmy John's in the world, all right? I only helped out one customer an hour. I know how to make a sub, but it just wasn't that fast-paced, and it wasn't that stressful. I get hired at Subway, get a new job. Same skill set, making subs. I know how to make a sub, but it's the busiest subway in the world. Let me ask you this. What is better for my development? Going ahead and starting day one since I already know how to make a sub or shadowing someone for a whole entire year, seeing how they work and then making a sub after one year. 
answer is going to the fire and making this up since day one. Because the thing is, I'm going to make mistakes. Okay, it's the busiest subway in the world. It's fast paced. I'm not going to be used to it. But guess what? Even from the mistakes that I make, I'm going to learn from my mistakes. And I'm going to fail and I'm going to get better at that skill and get better at my job. And I'm going to get used to the workflow. Yeah, shadowing someone. Yeah, you can learn some menu items, some tips and tricks about workflow and things of that nature. But You're really not going to learn a lot. You're not going to develop as much until you get into the job and you actually do the job. That works for any skill in the world, any skill that you want to learn. Do any skill a thousand times, you're going to get pretty good at it. Learn about a skill for about a thousand times or a thousand hours, you're only going to know so much. You're still behind in your development because you didn't actually do the skill. You have to learn how to actually perform the skill, not just reading and doing knowledge about that or getting knowledge about it, but actually doing the skill. For a quarterback uh, transitioning from college to the NFL, they already know how to play quarterback. All right, they already know how to throw the ball. They already know, they have the physical attributes of playing a quarterback. Otherwise, they wouldn't be drafted into the NFL. What's the biggest thing you got to learn? The playbook? Yeah, okay, learn the playbook. If you're not, if you haven't learned the playbook, yeah, you're not ready to play, but you have five months, six months, however long the offseason preseason is to learn the playbook. Okay. That's why I'm a big advocate for any quarterback to go out there as a rookie since day one and go out there into the fire and start and fail and learn from your mistakes. Cause that's the only way that you're going to get better is to actually do the job, not from sitting, not from holding a clipboard. You're going to learn some things here and there, but man, you're going to grow so much more as proven by the quarterback's names that I mentioned from actually playing. So the start or, or the sit and learn theory, dumb, does not make any sense. People just go along with it because it's it, it sounds smart, like I said, and the media came up with it and gosh dang, Colin Coward. They just go along with it, but they when you, they don't take the time to actually think and sit down and think, is this actually legitimate? Because it's not. It doesn't matter. Start your quarterbacks day one. Justin Herbert, he's going to develop. He's going to start the majority of the season. And I promise you, in second or his second season, in year two, he's going to be much better because he started his rookie season and he wasn't 16 games behind going into year two.